about how plants cope with low light and high light situations. And that's so we can better understand what our plants really need. So all plants are flexible to a point. They can do different things to survive in low light and high light situations. So the more we know about these characteristics, the more we can see um, what exactly our plants need so we can get them in that Goldilocks spot of the perfect amount of light just for them. So there's no one size fits all for any plant really. But understanding these changes in these plants are really going to help you give them exactly what they need. So when plants are in too low of light, we start to see things like the leaves elongating. Um, they might be wider. They're really kind of stretching out and trying to get as much light as possible. They can also be kind of floppy because there's just not enough energy they're capturing from the sun to make enough cellulose. So they're really just stretching out the resources as, as much as they can. They're usually a lot greener too. Um, without all that extra light, they're not making those extra red and purple pigments. So they're usually pretty, pretty green. And that's because the chlorophyll in there, they're really trying to maximize the chlorophyll to capture that sunlight. We also see things in carnivorous plants where um, like the American pitcher plants, the Saracenia, they're making more leaves like phyllodia. And these are non-carnivorous leaves that are specific for photosynthesis. In plants like sundews, they stop making dew. And also in Nepenthes, they'll make these beautiful wide green leaves, but the little tendrils at the end will not inflate into carnivorous pitchers. So if you leave a plant in too low of light over time, they're not gonna be able to make enough energy to thrive and eventually they'll die. But the amount of time it takes for that to happen is different for every plant. So just seeing the warning signs can help you get the plant in a better, uh, more higher light condition. Okay, so when we have plants in higher light situations, we start to see more compact structures. The leaves are more um, denser, they have less surface area. And this helps with water conservation, so they're not evaporating off as much water. It also helps with minimizing the surface that is getting hit by the light, particularly UV rays, which can be damaging. We also see a lot more pigmentation in these plants. So all those beautiful reds and purples we see also act as a sunblock from those UV rays. So just like our skin creates melanin, to help protect us from the sun, plants do this also. And when that light is just too bright for too long, we can start to see burning on the leaves. And enough burning on those really important structures, we can eventually kill our plants. This is also a reminder to watch the new leaves in the new environment because if you take a plant from low light and put it some suddenly in high light, it's just like a pale person going out to the beach with no sunblock on. We really want to watch the new leaves as they're developing in their new environment because it does take a long time to build up these defensive mechanisms. The new leaves should be colorful and vibrant. They're going to be the best indicator of how they're doing in their and also just be mindful of your climate. Full sun does not mean the same thing everywhere. If you live in Portland, Oregon, full sun does not mean the same thing as Arizona. Even here in Sebastopol, our full sun does not mean the same thing as two hours away in Sacramento. So just being mindful of where you are, being mindful of your plants and how they're adapting to their environment is really gonna help you get the plants everything that they need to grow their best. And that's what we want. We want you to have the best, happiest plants possible. So happy growing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll see you next time.